Okay. This is good afternoon, everybody. We were waiting for a few minutes to get organized and uh, give our chance to our students to to be picked up. We have a lot of families connected, so you'll see that we're not moving and we'll be talking from here. We're going to ask, please. The people who are still here to please. Yeah, Make sure control. that if we are staying here, please uh, try to keep the, the volume down because we have families connected from home. We want to say thank you very much for everybody who's uh, online and here to dedicate this time. We think that uh, the assessment is something that it's a very relevant subject to, to discuss, to share, especially because it's quite different to other schools. And we wanted to explain a little bit what is the assessment and the PYP, how can we help our students, and what do the teachers do? What does it look like in the school? So we all share the same point of view and we have the same information. Thank you very much for your attention. Today, the team that is going to be presenting are Ms. Sandra. Hello, everyone. Ms. Sandra is the Head of Learning and Innovation. She's our Vice Principal. Ms. Kim, who is the early years, uh, sorry, who is the PYP coordinator. And myself as, uh, as the early years coordinator. Uh, we will be covering different uh, aspects. First, we would like to have a general overview of what is the PYP, the essential elements. When we talk about the learner profile, the central idea, the lines of inquiries, what are we talking about? Also, the role of the different members or, uh, of our learning community. We're going to talk about the role of the teacher, the role of the student, which is a very main role, and the role of the families which is an essential role because, like I said, we're all part of this learning community. We will see a little bit, an overview as well, of the different resources that we use when we're talking about assessment. And finally, we will try to answer some of your questions that may arise during the presentation, or if you have questions later on, please feel free to share them with us. I hope that everybody can hear us properly. Okay. Good afternoon. I wanted to just give us an overview of the PYP before we start getting into the nitty gritty of how we assess the PYP. Unlike the middle years programme and the diploma programme that the students do when they're older, these are interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary uh, programmes. However, the PYP is actually transdisciplinary. So that means that of the in one year in the programme of inquiry, it's arranged and it's framed within four, five or six uh, thema the uh, transdisciplinary themes. Uh, these themes together provide children with authentic learning uh, experiences that are not confined to the traditional boundaries of subjects. Uh, although subjects play a very important role in PYP and especially in the younger years where they're learning their foundational skills in English and math, um, PYP learners actually explore real life problems by going beyond subject boundaries. And they have opportunities to reflect on the significance of their learning and to make meaningful action in their community and in the wider world. So our programme of inquiry outlines the scope and sequence of learning experiences at PYP. A scope and sequence is a, a, a programme of standards that we wish to uh, impart to the students um, and for every subject in the school from every grade we have a scope and sequence what will be taught and what will be uh, delivered in each subject if you want to look at our program of inquiry the best place to look is on the wall just behind this um, wall you'll see the, the program of inquiry for every grade is up there on display just to the left of the elevator um, i urge you to look at it if you can after this the, PY, the POI, the Programme of Inquiry, serves as a roadmap for teachers and provides guidance on what will be taught and when. And it's designed to foster inquiry-based learning. 
and develop conceptual understandings across a variety of subject areas. It shows the units to be taught by it through each sorry in each grade level through the transdisciplinary themes. And these will have overarching central ideas. So each transdisciplinary theme, each unit of inquiry will have a central idea. And that is centered around two or three key concepts and they will have an explicit function. So if you look over there, you'll see for each unit that's taught, there is a function behind it. Uh, for example, the function might be uh, responsibility or it might be causation. There are related concepts also, for example, citizenship or self-regulation. And all the learning activities are based on some lines of inquiry. Um, this is these are what we are going to explore. So when you receive your weekly, uh, sorry, your unit newsletter at the beginning of each new transdisciplinary unit, you'll be able to see all those key elements there at the beginning. And our programme of inquiry is anchored, as I said, in the scope and sequence so that uh, the student is always at the heart of the learning pro process. Thank you, Ms. Kim. Thank you, Ms. Osana. OK, so now we're going to talk about assessment in, in an IB school. Uh, sorry, but we skipped one slide, a couple of slides. There we go. Uh, so assessment in an IB school, why do we assess? So it actually assessment provides us as a school um, evidence that we need in order for the teachers to advocate for what they need, the students need. For example, we might need some new resources. We might need some support. They might need some training in order to be able to deliver the program. So as a school, we, we assess because we, we have that information for the teachers to be advocates for the students. We also, we also assess because we need that data in order to recognize patterns every year. So every year we try and we will get better uh, but it's why we was based on the data that we have from the year before. Uh, so it helps us set up goals every year as a school. Um, the assessment also helps us as leaders uh, answer the following questions. So like are our teaching and learning approaches working? Um, are our students learning the relevant uh, skills and conceptual loans understandings that they will need for middle school and for high school? Um, and how can we support our teachers better? So that's the overall of why we assess as a school. Now, in a traditional school, you will have this sort of pyramid here where they have assessment of learning at the bottom, assessment for learning, and assessment as learning. Let me explain the difference. So assessment as learning is when the learner, your student, takes responsibility for their learning. It happens within each person. So assessment as learning is what the two kids are doing. So when they are reflecting, when they're telling you what they learn, when they're having the discussions, that's assessment as learning. Then uh, assessment for learning is when the teachers and the peers are checking each other. So this is where the feedback comes from. The teacher talks to the child, checks on the child, says, OK, you need this to in order to move forward. You need this in order to to continue to grow. So that's where the feedback part comes. And also when um, teach, uh, parents can help them in the assessment for learning. And finally, assessment of learning, that's your test, your quiz. Uh, when, when we check to see uh, they do a project and when they're grading, so they, that's the last part, assessment of learning. So you see in an IV school, the base at the bottom is assessment of learning because a lot of responsibility falls on the student and each learner. OK, so that's the difference in other schools. You will have a, a, a whole week of tests memorizing uh, because their emphasis in is the assessment of learning, but that's very temporary. It doesn't really change the student. So we do it. We still do it. But you see, it's not the main focus. OK. Now, uh, as an Ivy school, what do we assess? So we assess knowledge. So it's the facts, the things that you can learn, uh, that you can memorize. Uh, and you can easily recall, we do, uh, but we also assess for conceptual understanding. That's how think, how kids can connect things that we, we teach them about, more global ideas. And we also obviously need to assess for skills. So this is sometimes a misunderstanding that people say, oh, but you don't assess for skills. No, we do, because we have to. So it's not only so we do have to teach them about the multiplication table and we do have to uh, test them on that. OK, 
Okay, so it is important. So it is balanced. It's not just uh, it's just not that the concepts and not just the knowledge, but it also the skills. So it's balanced. Um, as a teacher, so what are teachers' um, perspective on assessment? So you will see here they spend most of the time in assessment, monitoring the learning, documenting the learning, and measuring the learning. So when they are when they are um, monitoring the learning, they're asking themselves. Are they are the students getting what I'm teaching? So this is when they they ask, they're monitoring, they see, okay, they're not getting this. I need to modify my teaching. I need to add more activities. So this is a big part of the teaching part. Is, is assessment is monitoring the learning. Then is documenting. So as the kids get older, they're gonna do a lot of this on their own. The documenting. So starting say grade two, grade three, that they have that agency to document their own learning. Uh, that's when it's going to happen. But the teachers, um, they, they, they're collecting that evidence. They are looking at the impact of their teaching uh, and seeing what's working and what's not working. Then measuring the learning. This is the quizzes, your, your, your spelling quiz, your math quizzes. This is that when measuring the learning. Then finally, they have spent time also writing the narrative. So when you get your report card, that's a, a time that they spend there too. So it's a smaller portion of all the assessment. OK. Then OK, so this is how it looks like in a classroom. So when the teachers are monitoring their, the learning, they're doing observations. They're doing discussions with the children. They are getting feedback and they're giving feedback. If the students are giving feedback to each other, uh, they're conferring. So that's when a teacher, for example, sits one to one with each student. Uh, they're using rubrics when they're doing these projects. They're using checklists. That's on the monitoring part. In the documenting part, you have uh, the daily work, uh, the daily writing, the portfolios, the data that they need that they use from the quizzes uh, in order to, of course, uh, change their, their teaching or help the students with what they need. Then you have the measuring of learning. So we have, of course, internal assessments, but we also have external assessments. So uh, starting in grade three, we use the ESA test, which helps us track down um, the growth. So not in early years, but in, when they hit grade three, they will have this. Uh, and CAT4 is an assessment that helps us also measure the potential of the students, how they will, for, for example, uh, perform in uh, NYP or in the diploma. So it helps us track also our impact over the years. And this is only in grade six. Uh, and there's quizzes and obviously summative tasks. These are the bigger projects that they work on during the, the unit of inquiry. And reporting on the learning. So that's when you have your report cards, the student reflections, uh, and the student led conferences. This is how kids report on what they've learned. Um, these are some examples of assessments that we do. So like we said, there's a checklist, there's a rubric, some of the things that kids are doing, uh, and this is part of assessment. So it's all in there. It's not just necessarily one quiz or one test. It's a it's an ongoing process. And as we said, it's an ongoing process. It is a journey. So we when we report, we report using these proficiencies. So when you get your report card, just I want you to understand, it's not the child is emerging, and that means that's it. The kid is not going to move forward. No. It means it's a journey. So perhaps let's say you are studying fractions. What are the in early years? I don't know. The sounds. Yes. They yes. So you're emerging. Yes. So it, it just means that they need a little bit more support. As you see here, they have the support wheels that they, they, they can do a little bit, but they need some support. Then, of course, in developing, they are gone from those training wheels. They can do more on their own, but you always, the teacher is always there to support them in case they need. That's when they are developing. When they're proficient, that's it. They made it. They 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 can do things individually, independently, without the, the assistance of the teacher. And finally, this is not going to happen with everybody. So don't don't think that every kid is going to get an extent. That's hard to get. It's, think of like the A pluses. You don't get A pluses all the time. It just means that now what the student does is he learned this in school, he's proficient, 
but then he connects it outside of the alert, the, 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 con the context. For example, when they do action, they go home and they said, you know what? I learned about um, what the seasons and they come back and they, they connect it to patterns they see in the world. You know, like the seasons are they, like patterns. And when they are able to do this, they are extending. That means that they're able to connect what they learned with the world outside, but it's not necessarily connected to what they're learning. So we don't expect every child to be extended, but we do give them the tools. We do give them the opportunities to do that if they want to, and you can extend them at home as well. Um, so now. Oh. There we go. The student. Oops. There you go. So that's how assessment looks from the school's point of view and that's from us teachers. But how does it feel to a child? What does it look? What does assessment look like to a student? And what the IB has done, I think quite brilliantly, is it's moved away from that traditional teacher led high stakes assessments that we probably all experienced, you know, exam weeks, um, high stakes uh, university applications, for example. Um, and it's moved towards something quite different. In education, it is repeatedly said that we are preparing students for an uncertain future. We can't know what challenges and opportunities students will face. And therefore, it's our primary goal in the PYP as educators to equip them to have the skills and the capacities that they will need to learn on their own. When, when children become assessment capable, they continuously reflect on their learning. They set their own goals. They plan their own next steps to achieve their goals. They self-assess by asking questions such as, where am I going? Where am I right now? How do I close the gap? It is often said when students know how to learn, they are able to become their own teachers. Assessment capable students are simply students who have agency, who take ownership of their learning and reflect on their progress. And reflection is at the heart of a student becoming an intrinsically motivated learner, one who is self-aware, self-driven and energised to act, to have agency. Developing assessment ca capabilities requires students and teachers to partner in developing goals, reflecting on learning and self-adjusting. Students cannot do this without a lot of guidance. Becoming assessment capable is a lifelong skill and that leads to limitless learning. When children become assessment capable, they continuously monitor their own progress. They reflect on their learning and they set their own learning goals in conjunction with teachers, of course, and they plan their next steps to achieve those goals. This formative style of assessment approach is designed to promote student agency for them to take ownership and collaborate in the classroom to develop their own evaluative judgment. Evaluative, evaluative judgment is an understanding of what is good. If they don't know what good is, how can they evaluate themselves? Now, this is not to say that there are, as Sandra said, a place for the ways that we were all taught in, old fashioned memorizing, rote learning and testing, spellings, for example, or multiplication tables. We can all manage without now, with autocorrect and calculators on our phones, but there is something wondrous for a child to feel that sense of accomplishment when they've done well and that they know they've done well and they can identify how they've done well. Knowing what is good and having the intrinsic motivation to want to achieve it is assessment capable. I wanted to show you. Yes, I, I said that one. Thank you. Thank you. I wanted to just show you this slide, which is how we as educators feel uh, we want. We, this is where we want them to get to. Some of the ways that students can showcase their learning and how we develop them right from the very beginning in early years are presenting their learning. Now, that could be just coming home and telling you at the end of the day what they found out today. But we also do right from grade one upwards in PYP, more sophisticated presentations of their learning to different audiences, to parents, to their peers, to management. Um, and that goes on to individual action projects and further up in PYP, the grade five final exhibition. 
So if you just look at some of the bubbles here, these are some of the ways that we help children learn how they can affect change in the world, how they can take action based on what they've learned. So we heard about the role of the teacher. We heard about the role of the student. Now what do we do? How do we help them? How do we understand what we're talking about? We need to recognize that the role of the families, the way that we communicate, the way that we involve them, with the way that we engage them within the unit of inquiry, when we send you the newsletter and we'll say, oh, now we're going to learn about where we are in space and time. And you start drawing out the albums and the photos and talking to the grandparents. This is the way we really connect with the units. This is the way our students are motivated. And this is the way they will come back to school the next day and say, and you know, my granddad is from this country. And in this country, they celebrate traditions a different way. And they'll know this information because it's very close to them. So this is a very, very important part that we play when we are working with a PYP student. And it does, it does make a difference. And the experiences that we prepare at school, they become even more significant and relevant because they have a connection. They have a connection to their history, to the real world. They have a connection to the outside. And Miss Sander was saying, learning the patterns in the seasons, that's very abstract. But when you told them about the concept of change and you think about the seasons, things change. The environment changes. What we eat changes, how we dress changes. And if we're doing the change of clothes with them because now it's colder and we understand it better. So these things are very, very important. So what can we do? Obviously, there's the communication, the interaction with them, involving them in the communication. When you read the daily message and you think, oh, today you've done something very interesting. Tell me a little bit more about it. I've seen that you've been changing the colors of the flowers. How does that work? This interaction and this communication helps school go beyond, beyond to what we do during the day. Also understanding that every child is different, that they're at a different point in their development. So we cannot expect everybody to do the same, learn in the same speed, learn the same things, be as motivated or as interested in reading or in math. Some people love drawing, some people are very good in jigsaw puzzle, and that's what they really like, and that's how they will progress really, really fast. So we need to understand, with the help of the teachers who are doing these sessions along the year, doing these meetings and explaining to you. So this information is good, but also when you get the final assessment and they say, they're doing really well, we can see that he's progressing very good in this, uh, very well in this area or the other. So communicating and paying attention to the feedback you get from the school, because it provides a full picture. Also, boosting their skills, giving them opportunities. And when the family engages and supports the students in this way, we see that they get better thinking skills, they, their learning goes faster and they're more passionate about different things. So yes, please boost those skills because those are the ones that are going to help them in their day to day to get things quicker, to be a little bit more focused in the class, maybe listen a bit more because then they want to go home and show you that now they can do something else, they can do something different. And obviously the magic of wonder, we say that question, question leads our inquiry, question leads everything that happens in the school, but at home as well, having taking children to a special visit around the park to observe these changes in the nature, to collect uh, samples, to bring those samples to school. When they're looking around, then this magic of wonder happens. Then it's really when they realize what things and how, can, how they connect to just everywhere that not only what the teacher says, but also they can explain it to you. And then you can go and look for something very interesting and then they can go and see a snail and it's a living being and they understand this because they have learned at school that living beings are things that move that grow that breathe so this is very important so yes please promote that magical wonder it's not easy we don't raise easy children they ask questions and sometimes they are complicated questions because they have concerns so please feed that wonder in a pyp family what you will see is that They'll use this different language at home. Mom, today I've been a super communicator because I was asking really good questions during the discussion. Or I've been a risk taker. What does it mean that you've done crazy? No, it means that I was scared to do something. I was scared to try a new food, but I've done it. I'm a risk taker. I've 
observe, I thought, and I thought it was worth it, and I've done it. Also, uh, it's very interesting when you know a little bit, when you read that newsletter and you engage with that central idea, and then you find out that we're talking about how to transform materials and give things a different purpose. So when the teacher is asking you to send maybe a box, then you'll know what that box is for, because there's going to be a transformation. It's not only we need to ask them, oh, what is this box for? Are you going to do something at school? Hmm, and what is it going to be? And that thought process is already engaging. So it's very important how well you are connected to our central idea, to our lines of inquiry, so you can beat them as well. Go on trips, explore, go to the museum, read the signs. If we're talking about maybe prehistoric times, go to the Natural History Museum and learn a little bit about them because then they'll come to school and they'll share it. And you know, yesterday I went to a museum and in this museum there was something very special and it's very relevant for them and it's very important and that will stay really, really well. Also, we do ask for your cooperation in different ways. So please volunteer, volunteer with us, participate in projects, participate in readings, come if you can, when you can, or volunteer around the community. There's a trip to the desert to do a cleanup of the desert, participate, take them along so that they can see that everybody is part of this learning community and everybody's doing important things. And also look for this action. When we said with Miss Kim, the action happens at home. Most of the times we don't see this action, but please share it with us. Send us a photo, send us an email. You know what they did today? Today we went to the beach and there was a bottle and they had to go and get it because it is very important to take away the plastic from the seed because it's dangerous for the animals. Share that with us because that's what they're learning at school. This is what we're trying for them to understand. So you sharing this information with us means that that is really hitting home. They're really understanding the concepts, they're really understanding the ideas behind everything that we do. And for us, it's wonderful. And then we share it in the classroom and we acknowledge it. It's like, wow, you were a planet saver. And that day they, they're two meters tall and three meters wide and they feel so proud. So let's celebrate that. Like we said, please find the information. We, do, we take a lot of in putting this information in a way that is also interesting for you because we know that there's so much going on that you receive so many messages so we try to make them different so you can put them and put them on the fridge or put them on their uh, bedroom and then you can see oh oh look and yes this is the the idea that you're working on at the moment and this is the activity that you're doing and this is very good and they're constantly connecting uh, like we said find objects that they can bring to school if you have a pyramid that you brought from Egypt. Please share it with us. Let's see it. Also, keep in touch with our messages. If you're in the early years, you'll receive a daily message because we know that they're not. Uh, so <laughs> they don't share as much. They forget things. They just remember the last thing that they did. They cut a finger and that's the most important thing of the day. But please read the message because the teacher is probably giving you lots of hints of what's happening in the school. And if you're in the primary years, then there'll be a weekly message. But the objective is the same, is to keep you informed of what's happening so you can do that connection. And it's really great to start conversations. Sometimes we ask questions. What did you do? Who did you play with? Did you eat all your food? And all of a sudden it's like, oh my goodness, I don't know, black, blue, white. But if you tell them, oh, Wow, you know what I saw today? Today I saw a bird that was flying around and it landed straight on my window. And you know this bird? This bird only comes to Riyadh in this season. Oh, let's see what bird it was. Now you have a total different thing and you have them following you around just to find that bird. And if you have a photo, imagine. The report, the report is different. The report doesn't have numbers. We don't have numbers. Our children are not numbers. They progress, they take a journey. There are different moments of their development, there are different stages. And there's a narrative and a narrative that tells you a story. And it tells you a story about your kid, not everybody else, your kid. There's things that we all do at the same time, but every kid learns in a different pace, in a different way. And it's 
stronger or has more skills in one area than in the other one. And every teacher takes a lot of time and dedication to do this. It really is easier to say, OK, this one, five, this one, four, this one. If you have all these tests and exams, but that's not the way we work. We do collect information all along the unit. We do collect evidences and photos and we document and we look at it and then we tell you the story about it, but this story is your kid. And within this story, you'll find a target. You'll find how well they have accomplished their objectives. You'll find an advice on how to help them a little bit better or things that they still need to improve or polish or think that they're doing really amazingly. So please dedicate this moment to not only read it yourself, but once you read it, share it. Because what we want to do is celebrate their progress. It is their journey. It's not an easy one. It is hard. And everything that they do, it takes an effort. And they put a lot of excitement and motivation and they try really hard to do their best. And sometimes it doesn't work as well as others. But let's acknowledge that. Let's acknowledge that everything they do, really, it has an intentionality. So. Communicate, share it with us, share it with them. That's the way we celebrate progress in the BYP. Thank you very much. Yes. Do we have? Yes. Oh, yes. Yes, sorry. <laughs> it's a housekeeping thing. So, of course, you're not going to get the report card if you don't check Manage Back. Yes. So, the report card will be in Manage Back. So, you'll go through my SEC. Uh, we will send you a tutorial. You go through my SEC and then there's a place that says learning environment. When you click on learning environment, that will take you to manage back. You log in with your Microsoft account that they provided for you. Should be once once you are logged into my SEC, it should automatically log you to manage back. Um, and then you are going to be able to see where it says report. And that's where the report card is. We will send you a message before it's published. Um, and in that message, we will also send you a um, reflection sheet that if you can work with your child as you look through the report card, ask them questions and, and set the targets with them. Said, OK, how do it's more than setting the target. It's like the action plan. It's an action plan for them. So how are we going to reach these targets? It's a very important exercise um, so that it, the report just doesn't become something that you keep. And, and, and store away, but it's something that you work on. It's your plan, it's your roadmap for them to continue to grow. So if you have problems with Manage Back, uh, please let us know because we'll talk to the IT director to help you log in. OK, so that's it. Thank you so much for coming. Just one last thing. Just one last thing. I wanted to find the slide that's got some uh, examples of work on it. It's actually from grade two. Could you find? For me, please. I can't scroll across. Um, but of course, we're close here to KG and to the um, pre K2 classrooms. If you have a little wander around in your own child's class or the other classrooms, feel free because you'll see evidence up on display of assessment. It might look like beautiful pictures of uh, the seasons to you, but that's how we assess. Um, so we'd, I, I urge you to go and have a look around at some of the formative, the beautiful formative tasks that are on display in the classrooms. And if you have any questions about them, don't hesitate to ask us. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time, for coming. We were looking to see if there were any questions from home, but uh, we're not getting anything. So at any time, any moment, send us a message, stop us, ask us. We will be happy to, to answer your questions. Yes, we recorded this session. For the materials, I would like to recall again. So it would be much appreciated if I sent this to Mark again. Yes, we have recorded the session, so we will be sharing it. Yeah, it's not shared yet, right? No, not yet. Not yet. We only just reported it. I mean, not this one, but the last one, the new one. We sent down the information, but we didn't record it. This is exactly what I'm saying. Yes. So yeah, for the last one and this one, it will be really appreciated. We can send the presentation to me. No, the presentation we did send. And everything, we just need to, you know, push it out with, keep up with everything. Okay. We will No, very pleasure. Very no, thank you. <laughs> We're also waiting.